Hi everybody. Let's do another chapter of A Night Divided. Uh, maybe two. Chapter 18. I arrived at the building first, and despite how anxious I was to get down into the shelter and begin digging, I forced myself to wait in the basement to be sure Fritz got in safely. He approached the building the same way I had, using the shadow of the wall to hide him. I waved him in through the window, and after he slid inside, we shut the boards up again. Fritz was bigger than me, so he had separated the boards even wider, and the nails were bent. If someone really looked at this window, they might notice that the boards didn't shut tight anymore. That made me nervous, but there wasn't much we could do about it. He started to talk, but I'd already opened the heavy metal door into the air raid shelter and quietly motioned for him to follow me. The shovel was down there, too, ready to begin. Without saying a word, Fritz stood in the shelter, inspecting it just as I had a day earlier. He opened the crates, patted at the walls, and dug into the dirt to test it. His eyes ran along the ceiling, no doubt questioning where the line for the Berlin Wall should be. If we weren't beneath it already, then it couldn't be more than a meter away. How did you find this place? he asked. In a whispered voice, I told him everything. About seeing Dominic and Papa, the dance Papa did on the platform, and getting the picture from Anna. I fully expected his excitement to grow at the prospect of tunneling to freedom, to see his eyes widen the way mine had when I first realized the possibilities down here. If he planned to swim the spree anyway, this was a much safer plan. And this offered the chance for all of us to get to the West. But instead of showing any enthusiasm, it was just the opposite. With every new revelation, his shoulders slumped further and the light dimmed in his face. You were young when father left, so you didn't know him well. The tone in Fritz's voice was sympathetic as if... My innocence deserved his pity. You must have misunderstood his message, if there even was a message. Father never would have asked us to put ourselves in this much danger. Never. But he did, Fritz. I saw him and you didn't. You saw him doing a children's dance and read meaning into it. Then why did he send that picture? How do you know it's from him? In frustration, Fritz turned from me and ran a hand through his hair. How do you know it's not some test from the Stasi to get us here and then have a legitimate reason to arrest us? They don't play games like that. They do, Goethe. They do that all the time. If they believe our family has some sort of rebellious streak, do you really think they'll sit back and wait for us to commit a crime when they could just trap us now? Or maybe Anna's family drew this picture to lure us here so that they can turn us into the Stasi and get forgiven for what Peter did. Anna's family wouldn't. Yes, they would. And if you want to stay naive about how dangerous this tunneling idea is, then you have no business even thinking about it. Our friends could betray us. Family members could betray us. Some stranger on the street could report us and we'd never know who it is. There is nobody we can trust. But he had said us, Fritz and me, together. Fritz would never betray me, and even if the Stasi locked me up for a century and did their worst, I would never betray him. I picked up the shovel and pushed it into the dirt wall. Look at the way it crumbles, Fritz. This is soft dirt. He put his hand to it, and more dirt fell. Where's the boundary for the death strip? I pointed to his feet. You're standing on it now. He stood back and watched me, which was something. At least he wasn't leaving and dragging me away with him. We could never do something this big, Fritz said. I don't know a thing about tunneling. We can figure it out as we go. I said, all we have to do is keep moving forward and make sure the ground above us doesn't cave in. A couple of weeks of digging and then we're out on the other side. They sweep the death strip with sound sensors, he said, but thanks to this shelter, we're already pretty deep. If only we knew how wide the death strip is here. Now his mind was working. 
And we would have to make sure this tunnel came out into a safe place on the other side, inside another building or something. How can we find that exit when we can't see over there? We can figure that out too, I said. And Anna's apartment isn't far away. I can see the death strip from her bedroom and figure it out how wide it is from there. How will you get inside? She isn't speaking to you. I shrugged. First, I had to get him to agree with this plan. Details like getting into an ex-friend's home could be worked out afterward. Fritz took the shovel and dug at the dirt, trying it for himself. Within a few minutes, he already had a gap wide enough that he could stand inside it. Then he turned around. What would we do with all the dirt? There's going to be a lot of it. We can leave it in the room right above us. Nobody looks in there so it won't be noticed. Yes, but we would be. It'll take a long time to dig this. Somebody will see us coming and going from here and start to wonder why. And then we'll be dirty with no way to wash off until we get home. I had already thought about that too. On my way to bringing the shovel here, Frau Eberhardt asked where I was going. I told her the shovel was for a garden. What if we did plant one right outside the building? It's only dirt out there and nobody appears to be using it. We could garden in the day while people are watching and then tunnel when they aren't. He dug at the tunnel again, his way of thinking it over. I don't know, Goethe. I grabbed his arm. This is better than trying to swim the spree. You'll die if you go that way. And whether, and whether you make it to the other side or not, what will the Stasi do to Mama and me afterward? We know they've terrified Anna's family. Do you want them to come after us that way? No, he mumbled. No, of course not. If you are going to escape, then we need a way for all of us to escape. We're a family, Fritz. Half of us are already on the other side. If we're going to cross, to be together, it has to be all of us. Fritz stared at me a moment, then crouched down to stare at the dirt wall in front of him. You're right, he said. My heart leapt. Then we're building a tunnel? No. Fritz drew himself back up to his full height. No, you're right about the danger. Mama will be home on Sunday and she'll never agree to this plan. I don't know what message Papa intended to send you, but he wouldn't want us to dig either. If anyone could make such a crazy idea work, it's you. But it's not worth the risk to our family. This was a good plan, and it was slipping through my fingers like water. Listen to me, please. If we just... It's over, Goethe. He rubbed my head with his hand, something I didn't appreciate at all this time. We climbed back up the ladder into the basement and pulled the boards closed as best we could, never to return there again. Chapter 19 the night before the last day of school was a long one. I wasn't sleeping well anyway because of my excitement to begin summer break, so when I heard the sounds in the apartment me next door, I easily woke up. Someone was crying in the neighboring apartment, but not just anyone. It was Air Kraus. I couldn't understand that at first. Air Kraus was a strong man who'd come through two world wars and hunger and the death of his wife. I wouldn't have thought that anything could affect him so greatly now. Maybe even though he had been released from his arrest, the Stasi had done something that was still torturing him. Because he was clearly crying, which made me hurt too. In the week before the wall went up, at almost the same time he had warned my own family to leave, he had sent his children and their families across the border. If his wife had been well enough to travel, I know he would. I knew he would have gone with them. Now he was alone, surrounded by a crowded apartment of assorted tools, car parts, and trinkets that would do nothing to comfort him. The crying bothered me enough to get th that I got out of bed and walked into the kitchen for a drink of water. I was surprised to see Fritz there. Herr Kraus woke you up too? He asked. I nodded, and Fritz turned on the water tap, and then a small radio that Mama kept on the counter. 
While it blared out some all-night dance music, he motioned for me to lean toward him. He whispered directly into my ear. He's done that every night since he came home. It was his crying that finally made me decide to swim the spree. I thought you weren't. I won't. You were right before about the risks of trying to escape that way. But I've been awake all night listening to Eric Krauss and wondering what happened to make him cry like that. Then I wondered if that could become me or you or Mama one day. My mind was already made up to leave, Goethe. I just wasn't sure about how. He drew in a breath and then said, Papa might not want us to dig and Mama would never give us permission, but it doesn't matter anymore. We're going to build that tunnel. I felt so happy that I nearly cried out, but Fritz made some excuse to the microphones about the water not warming up and maybe we could try in the morning instead. Then he winked at me and leaned closer to mouth the words, Tomorrow we begin. It was a lucky thing that this was the last day of school because I barely heard anything my teacher said in class. We had some tests that I undoubtedly flunked, and in any other situation, that would be a serious problem. But what did I care now? I wouldn't be here when the next school year began. The one detail I did have to pay attention to was Anna. As our relationship stood right now, I wouldn't get inside her apartment for a simple drink of water, much less the chance to see the death strip, but I hoped to plant the idea of maybe letting me visit one day soon. So at lunchtime, I sat next to her as casually as possible. Her, her mouth started to drop open and then pinched closed. For the past two months, I'd eaten alone, just as she had. With my brother's arrest and her brother's death, we were equally tainted. While I picked up my sandwich, she began studying hers as if cheese and sauerkraut were suddenly too fascinating for her to be bothered with me. My plan was to act as if everything was normal between us. It wasn't so many weeks ago when I'd never have sat anywhere for lunch other than right beside Anna and when she'd have saved this seat for me. Why not just pretend this was one of those days? I'm sure excited about summer. I said enthusiastically, do you have any plans? Anna, <coughs> excuse me, Anna ignored me, or pretended to. I knew she was listening. I continued on, Mama left to take care of my grandmother, and Fritz isn't working, so he had a great idea. We found this patch of dirt that looks completely abandoned. We might pl try planting a garden there. Neither of us knows much about gardening, though. Do you? I didn't really wait for her to answer. There wasn't any point when she was still working so hard to pretend I didn't exist. So I reached for my dessert, a fruit crumble that was actually quite good, and I kept speaking while I ate it. The dirt patch isn't far from your apartment, just down an alley to the west. Maybe if I'm working one day and it gets too hot, I could come by for a glass of water? By this point, I was getting frustrated. Talking to Anna wasn't much different than talking to a stone. And I figured the stone would be friendlier. We'll plant corn, I think. Maybe some other stuff, too. Or whatever we can get seeds for. We're going to start on it today, when school is over. We probably can't sell the harvest. I'm sure the state wouldn't allow that. But we could give it away. It's too bad we can't sell it. I bet our corn will be so good, so juicy and sweet that every family in Berlin will want some. We could make ourselves rich. Stop it! Anna slammed down her sandwich hard enough that she nearly smashed it in her fist. She turned to me and hissed, Why do you have to talk that way? Why do you have to think that way? You'll probably get in trouble for growing it. And even if you don't, why do you have to care about getting rich? I know you admire the West, Goethe, with all their rich people, but there are so many poor people, too. Nobody has everything here, but at least everyone has something. Why can't that be enough for you? I was so taken aback by her words that I only sat there in shock. 
It wasn't things I longed for. What I wanted was far simpler and somehow much more complicated. I wanted books that weren't censored. I wanted to see places that were now only pictures in the smuggled magazines that had passed through my hands. Places like the canals of Venice, or the beaches in the south of France, or maybe even the Statue of Liberty in the United States. I wanted a home without hidden microphones, and friends and neighbors I could talk to without wondering if they would report me to the secret police. And I wanted control over my own life, the chance to succeed. Maybe I would fail, but if I did, it shouldn't be because some Stasi official holding my file had made that decision for me. None of that involved my interest in things, and I was angry with Anna for accusing me of caring about anything so trivial. If you don't want the corn we grow, that's fine, I said. I wouldn't share it with you now anyways. Then I stood up and I marched away. Only then did I realize the strange irony in, in my words to her. Of course I wouldn't share our corn with her. I couldn't. I couldn't. There was only one reason for us to be on that land, and it had nothing to do with a garden. I'll do one more. Chapter 20. The tunnel was underway by the time I got into the shelter after school. Fritz had been let out earlier than me and was already hard at work. Where he, where he could have barely fit his body inside the type gap yesterday, now he had carved out a small cove about two meters deep. It looked beautiful. I couldn't keep my smile from spreading. If you work that fast every day, we'll have supper with Papa and Dominic next week. Not in time for supper, perhaps, but we'll share their dessert. Fritz laughed, then pulled out from his pocket a letter from Mama. Before I could read it, he said, Oma Gertrude was worse than she thought. She sent a little money for groceries and expects to be there for at least another few weeks. This is the time we need, Goethe. I think we should try to have the tunnel built by then. There was a downside to his news, though. Fritz was wearing a new outfit, workers' overalls, and he had a set for me. Yours might be a little large, but it was the smallest size they had. I had to use Mama's grocery money to buy them. But why? Mine was a brownish gray, and the material was scratchy. I would have to stuff my skirt into the pant legs, which would make it even more uncomfortable. Even the hardest working farmer would never come home as dirty as we're going to get. These clothes need to stay in this room, and we'll put them on over our other clothes to work. That way, even if our hands get dirty, we won't draw nearly as much attention. And don't worry, we won't get hungry. Mama has some food saved up in the cupboards. If we're careful, we'll have what we need until she sends us more money. I'd looked up in the cupboards that morning, and there wasn't as much as he made it sound like. But this tunnel was my idea, so I couldn't very well start complaining about it. I slipped the outfit on over my school clothes and zipped it up. It feels like I'm playing dress-up in Papa's old clothes, I said as I tried to roll the pant legs higher. Fritz laughed again and helped me with the sleeves, and then he went back to work. He pointed behind us to a bucket with a handle. Your job will be to get rid of this dirt the best you can. The bucket will get heavy if you fill it too full, so just scoop in as much dirt as you can carry. Dump it out on the basement above us, and then come back for more. Again, I wasn't too excited about that idea, but he was right. Fritz would dig much faster than I could, and someone did have to remove this dirt. Without complaining... I set to work at my end of the job. A lot of dirt was already piled up in the shelter, so I tipped the bucket to its side, pushed dirt in until it was halfway full, and then hooked the handle over my arm to walk up the ladder. Once at the basement level, I peered around to be sure we were alone, then climbed the rest of the way up. I emptied the dirt into the farthest corner, 
A lot more dirt was going to fill this room, and it was better to use the space wisely. Then, back down I went. By the time I did all of that, Fritz had loaded five or six times of that amount of the dirt into the room. I, need to, I needed to work faster. So I did, but it didn't take many more trips up and down the ladder to realize I'd never be able to keep up with him, and I was already getting tired. Maybe Fritz's job required more muscle, but I became convinced that mine was harder. I filled the bucket with as much dirt as could possibly fit, and then I had to balance that while climbing a ladder. After only an hour, my arms were beyond tired and my legs were worse. I became thirsty, and the overalls were so warm I wondered how long it would take before I baked in them. Fritz eventually noticed me slowing down and told me to just stay up top and empty the bucket for a while. <clears throat> he would do the work of filling it and climbing the ladder. His buckets were more full than mine had been, so after only a few trips, he doubled the size of our dirt pile in the room. After an hour of this, he handed me another bucket and said, Most of the dirt that I dug out is emptied. Do you think we should... Quit for the night? Yes! If he was going to end his sentence any other way, I wasn't interested. Come back down into the shelter, Goethe. You need to see how far we've gotten. The hopeful tone in his voice gave new strength to my legs, and I hurried down the ladder. As tired as I was, I still thought it was the most fabulous thing I'd ever seen. We were probably at least as far as the exterior, exterior wall of the welcome building, which meant if we were up on the surface, we would now be openly standing inside the death strip, somewhere between those two impassable walls of East Berlin's border. We still had a long way to go. I wasn't kidding myself about that. But if the rest of our digging went as well as today had gone, we would be to the other side in no time. Maybe even farther. Why bother stopping once we're in West Berlin? I said laughing. Couldn't we keep tunneling until we reached France? Absolutely, he said with a grin. I'll make that tunnel come up right beneath the Eiffel Tower, and we'll have the most original view of it anyone has ever seen. We laughed at that as we stripped off our overalls and hung them over the bench on the other side of the shelter. We set the bucket and the shovel beside them, then climbed the ladder and replaced the heavy door over it. There's no point in covering this door with dirt, I said. I had done that in past visits to hide the door in case someone did happen to look in here. But now, if someone looked in, they were bound to see the piles of fresh dirt in the corner. They'd know right away that something was up. We wouldn't be able to hide the evidence of our tunnel. All we could do was hope that nobody would look. Fritz agreed with me and then said it was extra important that we replace the boards over the windows so that they looked undisturbed. Maybe I'll even reinforce them with new boards, he said. I'll make it impossible for someone to peek inside. After we got out into the evening light, we realized that the overalls might have protected our clothes, but our faces and hands were both smeared with dirt. This won't do, Fritz said. We look like we've been tunneling. Nothing else could explain our appearance. I pointed to the pond at the far end of the dirt patch and the irrigation river running through it. The problem was that to get there, we'd have to leave the shadow of the wall. Fritz looked around us. They'll see our footprints here. Better they see them all over, like a gardener's would be, instead of only near the building. We have to take the risk at some point. If they come, if they come, we'll show them where we want to put the garden. I straightened up beside him, and though my legs felt numb, we casually walked toward the pond. Once there, we lay on our stomachs and washed our hands, arms, and faces. So far, nobody had come. Maybe this was okay with the guards. Maybe. We would have watched more, but dark was coming fast, and we knew the guards in the watchtower would have, would have spotted us by now. They didn't seem to mind that we were standing on this land, but their feelings would change after curfew, which was strictly enforced. It was time to go.
Tomorrow we must bring water to drink, I told him as we hurried home. Yes, that and some food. A smile started in the center of my heart and warmed every inch of me. No matter how hard today had been, how hungry, tired, and thirsty we both were, Fritz planned to tunnel again tomorrow, too. I'll do a couple more chapters later.